Before Python 3.4, there was no standard Python module for dealing with paths. We could use strings to represent them, but it was inefficient and error-prone. For example, there can be missing slashes or extra slashes, and navigating paths would require writing complex code. Of course, there was the OS library to interact with the OS, but for this use case, it is unnecessarily verbose and doesn't provide the most intuitive methods. This is where pathlib comes in. It provides an object-oriented way of interacting with our file system, with its methods similar to the ones that we use on the terminal, making it intuitive and easy to use. To create a pathlib object, we simply import the library and pass it a string, or we can get the current working directory to get started. Going one directory up is as simple as typing curr underscore path dot parent. If we want to navigate multiple directories, we can use the parents method. Similarly, if we want to go one directory ahead, we can just use the slash notation. However, this folder does not exist. We can confirm this with the exist open parentheses close parentheses method to check if a path exists, or the dir method to check if a folder exists. We can then make the folder using the mkdir command and check it again. We can repeat the same process for a file. Notice that the commands we are using, like the mkdir or touch, are similar to how you would perform the same operation on your terminal. We can confirm the files and folders were created from the Jupyter Navigation window. We can list files or match patterns using glob on the path. Another complexity in dealing with paths as strings is finding the file name and extension. To find the full file name, we just use the name attribute. To find just the name, we use stem. And to find the extension, we use suffix. If the file has multiple extensions, like xyz.tar.gz, we can use suffixes to find all the extensions. This was a short tutorial on how and why you should be using pathlib to deal with paths in Python. The face cam you see in the corner of your screen isn't actually me. In fact, it was created with just my voice. You can do the same at deepword.co. Deepword, video production minus the camera.